the more I travel to more destinations in Africa, the more I discover that so many Africans are trying their possible best to uplift their own. And these are the things that give me joy, man. I have been here for the past two days and I found something interesting that is happening at the place that I'm staying. Literally, they got 11 rooms, right? Which means the resort or the lodge is not that big. But the work that this resort is doing worth more than all the I mean major lodges or resort that I've slept in. My name is Evelyn Haba Sarvarema, founder of Ride Fair Women, an NGO that was set up to empower women social and economically and we started small with bicycles so that is where the name comes from Ride Fair Women. We started with 14 but right now we have 54 women and these women are paid fed and they're given a drink. They spend their day here doing the sewing and the basket weaving and one of the things that we are trying to do is to make sure that at least every woman is empowered to have a coin or a dollar in their pocket so that they are able to buy a few things for themselves. What you've done is really commendable. I mean, when I came in here, see, when people start talking about foundations in Africa, most of them are owned by, I mean, not Africans. But I was so inspired knowing what you're doing in here, knowing that the person who is doing it looks like me. The person who is doing it was born and raised in this village. I think they don't know what I'm talking about, but I just want to give you a round of applause. Is it really true that you are born in this same village? Yes. Yes, it is true. Uh, next time when you come, I'll actually take you to my home so that you can take a video of where I was born and raised and where I still go to do some gardening. How was life growing up from this village? Hard, because I grew up there with my mother, eight children. She used to wear one red dress. So actually most people have been telling me to change the name from Ride for a Woman, because I have to explain what Ride for a Woman is, because most people call it Ride a Woman. And I'm like, no, there is a four there. Ride for a Woman, which is riding <laughs> to empower a woman. And uh, so she's put on one red dress. So people are like, maybe you should call it One Red Dress Project, because she's the reason why I started this project. Wow. Before she passed on, I, she wanted me to study. All her dream was for her children to go to school. So even what we were doing was she made sure that everyone, those who didn't study like my other brothers, is because they were insulted at school because we used to study when we are old. Even me, I started when I was a bit old. So it was hard for us to go through that period. But all at the end, she used to call women and she would tell them, you know what, I used to wear one red dress, but because of education, come and see my case. So what you can do Make sure you eat less, dress nothing, but take your children to school. Tomorrow you will be different people. But all she wanted was to set up a foundation for me to make sure I can come and start a project that was going to help the women. So that is how I came up. And I told her I had finished the university, I had a degree in tourism, I had met a wonderful man. I didn't want to go back to the village. There was no TV, there was no light. You grew up with no light? Yes, there was no TV, no light. We used to have not even candles. So we had small, I don't know if you have those in your village, where you put paraffin. Of course. So and you put lights, like you put the matches, mat matches box? That is what we used to have. So that was our candles, that was our light. So that is where I grew up from. Even when I came to Kampala to study with my sister, I would still go back to that kind of life. Even when I finished the university and I had to go and start this job, that is the kind of life I went in. There was no power and I was fine with it because, because I didn't grow up with TV. I had just seen it for some few years. So it was fine for me to go back to where I came from, to our original roots, and that is where we began from. So we have 300 women registered with this NGO and we started with bicycles. So our dream was to have tourists ride the bicycles, hiring them to empower women. These 300 women are HIV, women who are domestically abused, single mothers, 
and actually the widows. That is the category of women for us who are looking. That time when we registered, the 300, there would have been even 500. We kept saying no, no, and you know, at the end of the day, we were like, this is it. We can't take more than 300. Now, the hardest part was to begin. Everyone kept coming, uh-huh. So you start, and you know, I'm from that village. So everyone would come, Evelyn, why did you call us? We thought when you were calling us, you already had an idea on how this whole thing is going to roll. I'm like, to be honest with you, we don't know. We have the eight bicycles. We want to train eight women who are going to be professional bike mechanics so that if we get people who hire them, they can actually ride. But if we can't do that, our goal was to have these women where they can be counseled, where they can be talked to, where they can you know, learn a skill so that they also have time to talk to each other, heal each other. You have seen the hills in this village. This is a hill that these women climb every day to dig, to find food. So for them finding a place where they know they can also work, and they call it a workplace, where they know they can be paid, I am telling you, if this organization closed down, many people would actually be affected. I think they would have trauma. So that is how we started. So Walake, that in 2011 is when I met a lady from Australia. She was in Bwindi to do gorilla tracking because Bohoma, wind is well known for gorilla okay. tracking mountain, yes. So after her gorilla tracking, she wanted to buy African fabric. That's like, and then she was taking small pieces, two meters, three meters, four meters. And I'm like, what are you going to use this for? She told me quilting. I am glad I didn't know what quilting was because if I knew, then maybe this wouldn't have started. So she's like, she explained, she really saw I was not really getting there. She said, do you have an email? I said, yes, I do. So I gave her my email. She took it, sent me pictures of the quilts. When I saw that, I was like, this is nice. If we started this, I think this would help the women. And then she was like, really? I said, yes. She's like, now I can come and train women how to quilt. Wow. She organized, that was Patricia. She got Jill, and then she came with Kim, and they started. They had to learn how to use pedaling machines because they in Buindi, we had no power, so they had to find pedaling machines and they had to learn how to fix them. They came, they wanted 14 women out of 300. What pushed out some of these women was because they were not going to pay. As you've seen, these women depend on their own hard work. You have to dig to feed your family. Exactly. You have to dig to feed. So they were like, three weeks with no meat digging, no money, how am I going to actually feed my family? They were like, no. So by the 16, the 14 understood what it means to have a skill. We tried to convince them, we would educate them, and we didn't want to push them. We said, mm. for you who will understand and you think it will help you, come. They were there for three weeks, and this, that is where we started the running from. From the 14 women, as I speak today, we have 60 women. The 60 women, you've seen the names written on the path of you path. enter yeah, into yeah. the reception, yeah. all the names of the 60 women. We wanted to put it there as a souvenir, as something I've told you I would never do anything now because seeing the happiness, the joy of these women is what makes me sleep so well. And that is where we began from. So from that, we have gone into microfinancing, whereby we have over 200 women, 250 women with the micro loans. You didn't see a lady called Annette. She's a single mother of three children. She started with taking a loan of just 200. She bought chips, or I would say potatoes. She started making chips on the main road. After paying the loan, she got another one. She bought land. After one, she got another one. She has now built a house of three rooms whereby she can actually have a home that she calls her home where for her she says, even if she dies now, she just wanted to have a place for her children. She grew up in a domestic abused home. Her father had sold off everything, so everyone had to struggle for themselves. So she didn't want to leave her children just like the way their mother and their father had left them. 
So that kind of stories we have many. Now we have education for children because I believe if I wasn't educated, I wouldn't have come back. So we think with education, it is the only way I can change my community. So, so far we have 143 children that are sponsored with different people that have come to Ride for Women and want to be part of the community, part of Ride for Women. We give purified water. I am sure you've seen people wake up morning with jelly cans of water. It is open to the whole community. Anytime you want water to drink, you come. We use bio sand. There's no chemical, there's nothing. Actually, when I go to Kampala, it's so hard for me to get used to that water because I'm used to fresh and pure water. So no, nothing is added in. Uh, we have also given goats. So we looked at most communities in Africa. They don't have emergency funds. So every time they have an emergency problem, they will sell off the plot. They will sell off a little piece of their land. So we said, no, this cannot be happening. So we started with our own women. So we have given to 99 families goats, so that this goat, you can actually, after two years, there would be like maybe five goats. Then you can sell one goat every time you have an emergency. Uh, this year, our dream is to have solar. So the reason why I wanted solar was because of the education and there's no power. So most families, children don't read during night because there's nothing. So when they give them their homework or they have holiday work, they have to do it during the time. But holiday time, parents want the children to help them in the gardens. So we thought if we give solar, so we want to go house, every house, once we put solar, we want five families to share. So five families, those are five children, or maybe six. But one of the things that I've been seeing if we do it, is that if my child, like my daughter is not good at math, but your daughter could be good at math or your son. So he will help each other to actually do the reading. So that is the other goal. So our target is to maybe give 500 homes, solars. So if we do 500 times five, five homes, that will be over 200 and something. So that is the kind of thing that we are trying to do. Uh, recently we got a donation of someone who gave us cars. We want to start taking my community members, especially the women that we work with and the children. We want them to go to Kasese and see how beautiful Kasese is and how different it is from our village. Most of these people have never gone beyond Bohoma. So they don't know how other people work. They don't know how other things look like. They don't even know what really takes place. So because we are born there, you are married there, you are educated there, some of them are not educated. So that has kept the village. Not to, so we think by taking these children and these women to see better farms and better methods of farming, then they can actually come back and teach their neighbors and come, come back and help their other community. That is the kind of thing that we do and I've been uh, very grateful because the reason why the bicycles didn't work out is I was fresh from campus. One of the things we didn't put in consideration was the African roads. Mm. Then the other was because I didn't have anyone to market me. I didn't have anyone to, you know, to run to, to believe in what I'm doing. But I'm glad even when we started struggling, people have come on board. We have different companies that have come. We have UTB, we have UWA, we have different tour companies. We have different individuals that have come to ride for women and journalists that have believed in what we are seeing. Just going there and looking at these women working alone. These women, whenever they are there, we pay them and we feed them and give them a drink. So those are some of the things that when you come in and you see, you're like, you know what, I want to be part of this. And I'm calling upon everyone who can be part of this to make Africa a different place, to make Africa, Uganda a better Uganda or a better Africa. I'm sure we can if we can join hands. Before I used to be renting of bikes, now it's a, it's, a, it's a lodge, right? How did that come into existence? Okay, so because of the women who are domestically abused, we wanted women to be sleeping at the lodge. So those rooms were actually initially for women who are domestically abused to come in and shelter them. 
But because, like I've told you, this is a small village. Everyone knows the other. Mm. It was hard to maintain the women. The families would still come in. The angry husbands would still come in. So we agreed with the donor that we use those rooms as accommodation. And then 50% of the money that we collect from those rooms goes to help women who are domestic abuse. So that is how it came in. But we still do renting bicycles. So when you come in Buhoma and you've done your gorilla tracking, you can always book and have an extra day. Have you seen the designs in the room? It's like everything is Afrocentric. And this was done by the women. Have you seen this? You seen even your mosquito nets you got an African touch. This, your bed duvet, got African touch. Your pillows got African touch. And this were done by the women that lives in here. Take a look at this. And don't tell me this is not crazy. So which means when guest comes here, they help. Yeah, sometimes we have guests who can wish to donate to give something for the women. Okay. Yeah. So like this building it was uh, donated by one of the American uh, lawyers. Mm -hmm. So he had to donate it to support the women. That's awesome, man. Yeah. This is why we as Africans need to come together to support our own. Believe me, I never knew something like this exists. And I'm so glad that I came here. So this is how the room looks like. The bed. So I Good. What has been the major challenge that you face since you started this journey? The major challenge, as always, has been capital because it is pressure, it's overwhelming. The number of people that come to us for help, like I have told you, some of these women, the testimony they always give is like knowing that I am coming to work. Recently, one of the women stood up and said, you know, when we are here, we have our peace. The moment we walk out of the gate, we feel like we are now going back to problems. My husband stood up. He said, no, I don't want you to say that. I want you to have the peace that you have here. Carry it with you and take it home so that you can also change home. So that is the kind of thing. So we always have more people coming. Like right now, I need almost $2,500 every month. That is just basically salary to pay these women. That is minus the food. So if we don't have sales, you saw our shop. So we depend on tourists coming and buying the items. So we are thinking maybe we need to have online shopping so that we can create. But you know, when you're growing up, there are many challenges. Then we need to hire the technician. So when you look, and you can't get someone who is very cheap <laughs> to actually do the social media for you. So those are some of the things. My husband helps me to do part of that, so we had to share our roles. It's very organized with office work and management. So I'm very good at public relations and then also part of the administration. So that is what we do. So we try to balance. In the evening, I'll be like, oh, Dennis, I met so-and-so, so we need to keep in touch. Please, this is the card. Or I'll be, tomorrow I'll remind him, did you write or no? If I have sometimes with my WhatsApp, so in the evening when I relax, I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to say, hi, thank you for coming to support. So, you know, like we try to do this ourselves, but if we could get people who can come in and volunteer and maybe train some of our staff, we have very good staff. Even when we are not there, I am not worried because I know they will do exactly what we have taught them because I did tourism, he did development studies. So development studies is more like developing a community. One thing that I love is to give a tourist an experience. Experience that will stay within you. So I try my best. Sometimes people think we have a lot to waste. I tell them no. I would never sell coffee at my place. I would never sell tea. I would never sell a cookie or a small donut or popcorns. It is an experience. You give someone tea because that is how I was brought up. I was brought up in a home as much as it was poor. It was welcoming. At one time, before my dad died, he found people sleeping in the shed. There were over 60 people. We had a house of just two rooms and, you know, like a sitting room. You know, 
African average family mm -hmm. houses. So he was from drinking and when he saw them and he was like, where are you coming from at this time? And then they tell him we are from Kihihi. Kihihi is about 56 kilometers. They had walked 56 kilometers. Mm. So they were resting in Bohoma and they were going to cross the forest to the other sector. So my dad was like, no, please. I have a small house, but in Africa we say a house is never small. It is the huts that are always small. So if our huts are big enough, we'll all fit in wow. my house. Wow. So he, at around 10, we had my dad knock. I was little, I was about six years, but I still remember because some of the things I don't remember, but I remember a bit. We saw people enter the house. The line was not ending. The house was already full, but people were still coming in. I remember that time it was already 10, people had to get those small torches to go to the banana plantation, to cut matoke. They started peeling to prepare food. The men went to collect the water. They boiled for them to, you know, uh, you know, try to massage their feet, shower, so that tomorrow, some of those people who are still there, up to now, whenever they cross the forest, they always look for a family. It's not about being rich. You can be poor, but you still have you still have the reach in your heart to help someone, to change their lives, to make a difference in someone's life. Yeah. What are the kind of support that you need from us? Every kind of support. I've told people, and this I will always say, I've always told people it's not about money. They will give you billions of money and it will be useless. I still need more brains. We have been running this organization, me and my husband, but most of the things that we do has been people like you that come and say, Eve, I think you pushed it so much here. You need to be online. You need to do this. So I, we need more brains to come on to this organization to make it a better place so that tomorrow in Uganda we have very many national parks so that this can be done in every national park. So many people have come to me to go and do it in other parks and I'm like, mm -mm, hold on. I am already carrying enough burden. I can't add on another park. What I always tell them is like, please go and start. I'll come in and train. I'll come in and help. I always tell them, start small, keep growing. This is how we started. We started small and we kept growing. So any kind of support. It can be an idea, it can be money, it can be volunteering to do the marketing, to put up on so many social media. That is even better than giving me money because I know then money will actually come in. So anything that anyone thinks when you go to our website that you can do to improve the organization, to improve the lives of the women, to improve the lives of the children. One of the things that we did recently is to start an organization for men. And the men want it called Ride for, we Ride for Men because we realized that when we started this organization, domestic violence is usually due to lack of money, lack of food in most of the African countries. When a woman is working so hard and a man is drinking, you come home, you want food, and you didn't even give the woman food. So at the end of the day, she will answer you badly, and because you already have the influence of the old call, then you end up actually fighting. So now we have tried the 70 men that we have, we said no drinking. If you want to drink, you're not in this group. And these men don't drink because they want. They are drinking because they don't have what to do. They are not educated. They have, no one wants to employ an educated man. So they have, lost, they, they have lost their esteem. They feel like the world is gone for them. So the best way is to find it in drinking alcohol. Your final message to Africans watching us right now? I would want to say, I don't know, I am proud to be an African and I am proud to be a Ugandan, especially to be born in Bwindi. And I want to tell everyone, your destiny is not in being in a rich family, no. It is not being in a poor family, no. It is what you can actually make it to be. You can choose to be a happy person or you can choose to be a miserable person. But every time 
you have something and you want to share it with someone, please do. One thing that I do is I stopped being selfish. As much as I can, I want to share what I have. It can be joy, that is where we go wrong. We always think money is the best thing to give out. No, you can share with me your testimony that will change my life forever, that will make me a better person tomorrow. So please, we can join together as Africans, we can join together as Ugandans, and I'm so proud and happy to have met you. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here this evening to give me your time. And please, me and my husband, we are still inviting you to come. I'll be so back. So that we can take you to some of these homes. I want you to get the testimonies yourself. Not me speaking, these women speaking. Someone else would interpret, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can actually get to see what we are talking about. My, my final question, how do you feel when you see the impact that you've made in this woman's life? Very proud, but all this, I wouldn't have done it alone. This has been possible. People have believed in me, and that has been my humbling way that I have never written a proposal. I speak, and people believe in what I'm saying. I talk, and people believe in what I am, and they see on the ground. I am telling you, oh, I've never put money in marketing. Every time UTB has any journalist, they will come. Any guide, any tourist, anyone that knows Ride for Women, if they have a client and they think this client is going to add an impact on Ride for Women, they will come to Ride for Women. So I wouldn't say it has been me and my husband. No, this has been possible because of people like you that come to us. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. And I'm inspired by your story. After talking to you, I feel like going back to my village and also starting something. I mean, that's what is running through my mind right now. Please do. Because I was, I I was I'll be part of you. I, no, I think I would need your expertise. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.